About three years ago I went running on some snow, at least I thought it was snow, but underneath the snow was a layer of ice that had frozen during the night and I didn't realize the ice was there. But underneath some light fluffy snow and I thought, oh no problem, I can handle that okay. So I took off running, hadn't gone very far when whoop, I was on the ground, laying down on my back and in a lot of pain. I'd slipped on the ice and had fallen. I had no broken bones, but I had some serious bruises. I was able to crawl over to a fence and sort of climb up the fence pole to get on my feet, hobble back to my car, and drive home. As I recovered from my injury and was able to do small amounts of running, I realized that I needed to have some way to run on ice and not fall. So I did a lot of reading on the internet and discovered that there were several products available that provide or convert your running shoes into ice shoes. This product is called Get a Grip. It consists of this rubber thing that fits over your shoe, contains six studs, two in the toe area and two in the forefoot area that provide the, dig into the ice and provide the friction that you need. It works quite well as a product except, except I ran into two problems with it. First, if it were installed incorrectly, the rubber itself would touch the ground and would wear through friction and break and the, t the two studs in the toe then in this example you can see are only supported by three points instead of four points so it fits a little bit looser on the shoe but it still works okay so that was a problem but not a disaster the second problem that I have with this is that if the I'm running if I'm running in deep snow, especially the heavy wet snow from a snow plow when it pushes the snow over to the edge, the friction between the deep snow and the rubber thing will cause the rubber thing to come off your shoe and I have to stop, find a place to sit down and put it back on. So that's really a nuisance. Not, I didn't like that at all. Another sort of a little nuisance factor was that I always had to, when I'm ready to go running, I had to take a, a moment and put these back onto the shoe, put these onto the shoe before I even started the run so I could use them if I, if I knew ahead of time that I'd be running into ice. So I decided that for this coming winter that I'm, we're going into that I should get something different that would work, would not have the two problems of rubber touching the ground and wearing through and the uh, snow grips coming off, or the ice grips coming off in deeper snow, some way that would provide a more permanent uh, solution. Also one that incidentally would cost less. I did a lot of reading on the internet and discovered that a lot of runners are making their own ice shoes. Lower cost than the commercial products and they work just as well. So I decided well that's what I would do for this winter. I'll make my own ice shoes and see if they work well. If they do, hopefully they will not have the two disadvantages that I mentioned in the commercial product. Their method was to take screws and insert them into the bottom of the sole with the point going in towards the inside of the shoe and the head of the screw sticks out about oh, an eighth of an inch about the same distance that the studs did on the commercial project and provide they grip the ice and provide the friction that we need I need between the, the shoe and the ground so I don't slip on the ice. There are three screws in the heel, three screws in the midsole and one screw in the toe. The three screws in the heel are 6-32 by 1 inch, same size for the midsole, but a little shorter screw because the sole is not as thick. My plan was to have this length of the screw be about half the thickness of the sole. And because the sole is thinner at the toe, then I had to use a shorter screw. For the 6-32, I had a nut driver that would fit that size, and so I used that, and it made it very easy to put the screws into the rubber. Just push really hard as I turned the screw, and when I got it in uh, far enough from the pushing, the uh, threads would engage the rubber and pull the screw in. However, I didn't have a nut driver for the small screw in the toe and had to use a screwdriver. I tried and tried and couldn't ever get it to penetrate the rubber because I just couldn't get enough force pushing in on with the screwdriver it would slip off. So I drilled a small hole to help get the screw started and then that worked fine and the screwdriver was able to turn the screw and it went right in. So these are my eye shoes. I've used them twice. I call this phase one testing as I shoveled the snow off my driveway and my sidewalks. And in both 
occasions the first time was realized the t time this afternoon was just in slushy and packed snow but they worked really well and I had no problems at all in uh, sliding it was just like I was walking on dry ground so phase one was a very good success I'm looking forward to phase two where I will be using the shoes on a real run and I'm quite anxious to do that because I'm fully confident that they will work well since the phase one test went so well that they will really work well as ice shoes. They're not going to come off because I got about an inch of penetration into the rubber for the screws. If they get a little bit loose, I can tighten them, but I don't think I'll ever lose a screw in the snow. And they won't come off at all. And I'm keeping them in the trunk of my car so that if I drive up to the a trail, the path where I run along the Jordan River, and discover that it has ice on it, I can just go back to my car and put the shoes on and, and take off again. Or if I know ahead of time from the weather reports that we have icy conditions, then I can put them on in the beginning. So I'm keeping them in the trunk of my car for easy access. And looking forward to some great runs this winter. No slipping on the ice, no bruises of my back or buttocks, no broken bones. Just a good winter of nice winter running.